What is it that a man can touch that will make God owe him his presence? Like a debt that he must pay. If you will allow me in the next 10 minutes, I want to drive you to that realm. That realm where you will touch reality and substance in the spirit. That, that you will stand and you are like a God upon the earth. They looked at Paul and Barnabas. They called them Zeus and Hermes. It's not about being arrogant. It's that you have become a throne upon the earth. You legislate on behalf of a government that is real. You are not trying to fake this thing. Is God speaking to us? The move of God that is coming will have no room for trial and error. We are circumspect in understanding. Otherwise, you know, I didn't even go to my message this morning. I wanted to teach you. I hope we'll have time. But I was going to teach you the mystery of the two witnesses. The mystery of Enoch and Elijah. These are the two offices that precede the move of God. There's no time, but we, we didn't get there. Enoch was the seventh man from creation according to Genesis 5. And the Bible records that that man was an embodiment of a dimension of intimacy. Enoch is not just a man. Enoch is a spiritual system. Is the spiritual system allocated for understanding intimacy. Are we together? And then Elijah, Elijah is not just a prophet. Elijah is a system. That's why Elijah as a person goes to heaven, comes back in John the Baptist, comes back again. Jezebel is not a woman, it's a system. So these systems only found men that gave them, that hosted them, but they are ancient systems. The first manifestation of Elijah was in Noah, not Elijah sustain the eyes of the spirit to see beyond the physical actors and to see the spiritual synergy the individual actors may die but the system continues Jezebel dies Elijah goes to heaven Jezebel reappears in Herodias Elijah reappears in John the Baptist we are going to pray are going to cry some of you will find out after this morning session nobody will need to pray for your prayer life again it will shock you how some of you will not be able to sleep this night you will stretch this is how Jesus empowered people there is an there is a force there is an operation of the spirit that compels you to enter dimension Now, there are many of us here who are almost missing it if not for this conference because you have been so impressed with your level of revelation there's no room for the things of God again and now God is stepping up the bar and showing you how bare you are and you are saying Lord I repent of pride you showed me a dimension of truth and I'm almost carried away because I'm doing very well I return to you don't be embarrassed about it. It's how God lifts men. He allows eternity to swallow up everything you have done in time and reduces you back with a fresh hunger for God. Hallelujah. I don't know who this dear lady is. I'm not prophesying now because of time. But I'm seeing an angel pouring oil. This girl lying down. And the Lord is saying that he's bringing a visitation to her family. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. May that visitation that I see in the spirit, as I stretch my hands over this dear lady, I decree and declare that visitation by the angel of the Lord's presence, the Lord himself will confirm that visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I establish it in the realm of the spirit and I decree and declare that it is so. It is so. It is so in the name of Jesus Christ. It is so in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray? These two gentlemen, this guy, you see him? I, can you see me? That, that gentleman, 
you looking at me you and the other gentleman they are not seeing me no right this this third row that yes two of you lift your hands yes two of you I saw an angel pouring oil I don't know who this gentleman these gentlemen are but I stretch my hands from here in the name of Jesus I pray that you will begin to step into dimensions I see the spirit of prayer and supplication coming on two of you is is a dimension of the spirit of prayer that you have never seen it will come upon your life it will come upon your ministry can we pray for five minutes now listen hold on in the next five minutes I'm going to leave you alone and God I don't know what you want to do this five minutes but let there be a cry from your spirit please let's lay our golden crowns and in the next five minutes Mike you just play softly you clash the cymbal and we're going to cry and say Lord in this move of the spirit let me be featured let me be featured as you are raising men as you are raising men students pray pray cry let's cry to the God of heaven for I will walk a walk in your days that if it were told you you will not believe I will walk a walk in your church in your ministry I will walk a walk in your city and in your land it is the character of the latter rain it is the character of the latter rain he said ask me for rain in the time of the latter rain and I will pour the spirit of prayer and supplication upon the house of David hey, hey. Like the Asuna Street Revival, like the revivals of old. Oh God, we present ourselves as the generation of Jacob that will seek your face. Hey, hey. Regardless of church, regardless of spiritual affiliations, we may not agree on everything, but Lord, we present ourselves as a womb in the spirit. Let there be an incubation, an incubation, the seed for this revival. Pray. Let there be a restoration of the ordinances of God, a restoration of spiritual patterns. Open up the gate. Will you open up the doors? We are crying for the portals of revival to be open in the spirit. Open up the gate. Open up the door. Will you open up the gates over families, over territories, over regions? Hallelujah. One last prayer point, and we're done with this morning session. Listen. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Something happened between Elijah and Elisha that extended the program of God. But Gehazi preached that order. Are we together? Gehazi would never carry that grace because of something that was not correct in his life listen carefully and the bible says that elisha died 
in God's system, people don't die with the anointing. No. It is only the bodies that should leave. But the system of continuity must be transferred. The Bible says, once Elisha, Elisha died, there was an open sepulcher and they were bringing a dead man. Listen carefully. The potentials of God sabotaged because a generation was not ready to receive and a man went to the grave with it. The Bible says that dead man meandered the open sepulcher and touch the bones of a man who is already dead are we together and all of a sudden the dead man jacks back to life confirming if that dead man never came back to life we will believe elisha is gone and is gone yet there was something in that grave many people have transited with anointings and graces are located for certain dimensions of God. Listen, when you see a dispensation suffering a particular spiritual deficiency, nobody received that mantle from the preceding generation. So there was no system of supply to the body. For instance, if you find out that all, for instance, just an example, all the pastors in Abelkuta love God, but they don't pray. That meant that whoever carried that torchlight before that generation of pastors, nobody was available for the transference of that grace for prayer. Look at your city spiritually. Identify the gaps in grace and anointing. It's a revelation of dimensions that have either been criticized out or not received through honor. Are we together now? But in this conference, one of the things God is doing is like the hair of Samson. Because when Elijah comes, he restores all things. Are we together now? The mystery of Enoch and Elijah. Elijah is a representation of the spirit of prayer. But it's also a grace for the restoration. Every time God is about to show up in a land, Elijah must come. Are we together? Look at your church. If you are prosperous, but you find out that all your members love God, but they don't seem to pray, there is a dimension that has not been received to remedy that lapse. So one of the things God is creating, there will always be a vacuum somewhere. Your assignment is to identify it in this conference and open your spirit to say, Lord, why is it that I pray so much but no revelation, no influence, no prosperity? What dimension did I ignore? And that dimension is supplied you. Are we together? Let me pray for you. We have to round up. Please, like Pastor said, I, I wouldn't mind even if it means for Pastor to just come and re-emphasize it. This is not just for showmanship, but please, I want you to come tonight with your heart open. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to minister to people. But one of the things I pray and trust God that he would do tonight, and I know that is the burden of your pastor and all the men of God that are represented here, is that let's be able to host a dimension of God in this place tonight. Are we in agreement on this? That we will, we will align ourselves in such a way and a manner that God will just come and sit upon us like a hen upon her eggs until certain things are broken and released that after this conference, it will be said that this is not the first time we're holding a Belkuta conference, but that this one, something came into this city that the next time God grants us grace to come, we will know. You can trace it. Like certain moves of God, they will say, oh, Apostle Babalola, this is when it started. There should be a move of God that must be traced to this. But I pray for you. I don't know what has made you satisfied spiritually where you are. I don't know what has killed the hunger, just, just like Pastor Shegun was sharing here. I don't know what has granted complacency, but I pray in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be such a dimension of hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your understanding. You have done your best. You have books. You have concordances, 
you have tapes, you have CDs, you are, a, you are studious. But with the bankruptcy of that miracle of your understanding being opened, all of those things will just cause you to enter a state where the Bible says ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge, the comprehension. I open the mind of your spirit to comprehend spiritual realities. In the name of Jesus Christ, access to light and illumination, I speak it upon your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray finally for you. Please help that gentleman. I pray finally for you. Many of us know the Holy Spirit, but in theory. Many of us know his power. We've seen people under the influence of the Spirit. Many of us know his miracles, but many of us do not know him. Truly, I pray this for you from the depth of my heart. I don't know what God did to me to help me with the Holy Spirit, but I cry to God and I pray. May that same miracle happen to you. That the same way an evil spirit enters a man and seek to, seeks to live out his characteristics through that man, that you will be so full of the Holy Ghost that everything about your life will be an effulgence of his presence. And then I pray for you. Some persons here may be under some urgency that cannot wait till evening i decree and declare to you right now whatever it is that is a cause for alarm there is no need to panic in this earth because everything works by laws including restoration i declare that as a token of your commitment coming to wait from morning and then you have other sessions now before evening that between now and the evening meeting, let there be a unique miracle that God will give you. Now, please, I want you to believe me. I'm not just speaking casually. Before you believe a man, find out about him. Don't just believe, especially for those of you who this is your first time coming for the conference. I pray it again. You see, the centurion said, for I am a man under authority. And he said, I say to one, go, and he goes. Not because of who I am, but because of a government that that I am loyal to. I pray for you again. I'm not suggesting. You see, prophecy is twofold, as you've heard me say. There is the revelatory dimension of prophecy. It gives you direction, but there is the creative dimension. It captures scenes that have no business being featured in your life and makes them happen. That's the creative dimension. I'm praying for you again that between now and evening, may my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That God will do in 10 minutes something you would have thought will take 10 years to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please wave your hands to Jesus.